This video is on uh, organic reactions, specifically choosing substitution, addition, and elimination, mostly for the way that they interplay with each other and the fact that you can uh, basically deal with hydrocarbons and their conversion into either halogens or alcohols or back into hydrocarbons. Um, kind of the level one understanding here would be given a bunch of reactions, can you identify what the reaction is. And a very simple way of imagining this is if you look at the organic reactant and product in a reaction, if you see that a component has been switched or swapped, then we would classify that as being substitution. If you can see that the um, reactants have combined together, so you have an organic reactant that joins with something or combines, then that's addition. And if you see an organic reactant where a component of it has left, typically that is a feature that makes it a derivative, uh, then it would be an elimination reaction. So those can actually be illustrated in these uh, very simple uh, illustrations. So in the first case, you'll notice that uh, what we've done is we've taken a portion of the methane molecule, let's say this here, and we've replaced it with a chloro group, like over here. Uh, now, the reason why uh, there is an asterisk up above is that substitution can actually happen in a few different ways. The um, illustration that I have in this case is a free radical substitution or an electrophilic substitution. And we're going to see that there is a second type. But to make things simpler, if you notice that the reaction reactant is saturated, then it's likely that we're dealing with a substitution reaction. In the second case, notice that you have a reactant that is unsaturated because it has a double bond in it. Then having the chlorine uh, molecule around, it will actually physically add across the double bond and that will form the 1,2-dichloroethane that you see over on the right. So uh, the last case is, well, what if we take the um, derivative component, so that would be the chlorine, and let's say that we're going to kind of take that out with the hydrogen kind of in pieces, uh, then you'll notice that where those two components leave, you form an extra bond in the gap that's been formed, and that's where you get the double bonded product um, of that elimination reaction. So you've taken away the chlorine and a hydrogen but formed a double bond in its place, okay? So that's a little bit of the notion of how to recognize the three reaction types. Level two uh, would be to be able to understand the uh, sort of general patterns that are created. Like, well, what would happen if I added uh, some kind of a saturated molecule to chlorine? What, uh, can I predict what is gonna happen at the end of that process. Um, I would argue that level three might be able to weave through something a little more like this, where uh, you might be asked whether in one step, which is kind of the pattern up above, or in two steps, which is the pattern down below, if you can force ethene, which is over on the left, to turn into ethanol, which is over on the right. And we're gonna see how that could happen uh, through a variety of steps uh, during this presentation. But uh, generally, that's kind of our goal is to be able to look at reactions in this bigger picture and be able to visualize how it could happen in either of these pathways. OK. So the first type, and if you watch the video uh, related to the test for saturation, this is essentially going into that kind of a process. So very much like I demonstrated earlier, um, you would have a reaction here with a saturated uh, molecule, which is in the first case, methane. And uh, what actually happens here is that uh, this bond over here gets exposed to UV light. So often what we would do is indicate that, you know, if there's some kind of a 
a mechanism or uh, a catalyst that has to occur, we'll actually write that over top of the reaction arrow. But in this case, to illustrate, we can see here that the UV light comes in here. Technically, what that would do is break the chlorine into what are called radicals. So we've kind of freed up the electrons to go and attack other components here. Okay. Um, as that happens, uh, that chlorine radical can go and attack the methane molecule and uh, free up uh, a site for uh, the other chlorine atom to come in and free things up. Uh, in essence, you make the HCl by having the uh, chlorine radical come in and attack, let's say, a hydrogen. That would kind of peel off and make the HCl, and then you would have a methyl radical that's left over, and then the other chlorine would go in and tie up that, that last bond. So the product of this would be the chloromethane and then the HCl molecule. Now, this is a random process. So just because this top reaction illustrates it in this way, doesn't mean that it's the rightmost hydrogen that is gonna be attacked. And in fact, this is a random process and it can actually attack in a variety of locations. And that is illustrated down below. So if this reaction, which also requires UV, were to occur, the bromine radical can actually attack any of the hydrogens that are around. And let's say that it makes an attack at one of the hydrogens that's underlined, which sits on a terminal carbon. Well, in that case, you would have a situation where one of these terminal bonding locations would be replaced with bromine. So let's say it goes down here. And then we'll just fill in the rest of the molecule. And one of the possible um, products then is this one, which is 1-bromopropane. However, that is not the only possibility. In fact, the one hydrogens that are being circled right now could get attacked, and we should be able to acknowledge that that is a possibility as well. So let's say that that top circled hydrogen got attacked. And the result of that is 2-bromopropane. Okay, so this is in essence where your knowledge of substitution or electrophilic substitution reactions should go. It's to be able to recognize when these types of isomerism are possible as products. Second type of substitution reaction is nucleophilic. In this case, we have something which is a nucleophile, which in this case is the pair of electrons sitting here on the hydroxide ion. And what's going to happen is that that pair of electrons is going to come in and attack the carbon, uh, permitting the chlorine to grab the pair of electrons in this uh, bond and leave with it. So in this case, the chlorine is acting like a leaving group. So the pair of electrons from the hydroxide go and uh, essentially fill the octet on the uh, carbon. And you'll notice that in essence, we have substituted the chloro group or chloride ion really, which left, and then the hydroxyl forms the group uh, on the molecule, on the organic molecule. So this is a second type of substitution reaction. This can happen in two different ways. So you'll notice that not only can we replace the um, chloro group from chloromethane, you can also do it in the opposite direction. Uh, in this case, by actually making the hydroxyl group a good leaving group by having the uh, hydrogen attached to it. So what makes this a good leaving group is that we actually hitch the hydrogen on here and making this sort of a po positively charged end of the molecule, which will then grab this pair of electrons and it will leave. And then the chloride ion that was left over, which of course has its full octet of lone pairs, which makes it a good attacking group, uh, then that will actually come in and attack the carbon center and swap in to make it chloromethane. So this kind of shows you two 
uh, possible nucleophilic substitution reactions that we might be responsible for in this course. Arguably, addition reactions are quite a bit easier. Uh, in this case, you'll notice that the starting point is always uh, an unsaturated molecule. And just for ease, I'm always starting with, um, in this case, ethene. And uh, I'm showing a variety of addition reactions here. So uh, you can do this with, you can see at the top, uh, chlorine, so Cl2. And the attack here is across the double bond. So you'll notice that as a result of the chlorine uh, molecule, essentially making its way into a position across the double bond, so you can imagine it there and there, uh, then uh, the double bond breaks. The uh, electrons are shifted around such that you make new bonds to the two chlorine atoms, making, in this case, 1,2-dichloroethane. You can do a similar reaction, except let's use hydrogen chloride in this case. Now, this particular diagram essentially imagines that the H and the Cl molecules are attacking in a manner where the Cl is attacking at the first carbon or the leftmost carbon, and then the H is attacking at the rightmost carbon. When you have asymmetrical molecules like HCl, their orientation in space is random. But you'll notice that if we drew this molecule with the chlorine sticking up here instead of on the left, we've essentially just made the same molecule. It's just a mirror image. And calling either of these chloroethane is absolutely fine. And then in the last case, uh, we are doing the same thing except with water and water would add across a double bond and therefore turn the product into an alcohol. So that is turning ethene into ethanol. In this last case, we have an elimination reaction that basically takes a derivative and turns it into an alkene. Uh, it does so uh, in this case by creating a pretty good leaving group. So in this case, the pair of electrons is going to get pulled away by the chlorine. Uh, the OH is going to come over here and encourage the H away, leaving behind a pair of electrons and forming the double bond uh, in its place between the two carbons. So that's a pretty simplest way of uh, looking at this elimination reaction. Uh, in the second elimination reaction, you actually are causing water to leave the molecule. And as a pretty easy turn of phrase, anytime that you have uh, water enter or leave an organic molecule. Sulfuric acid is usually a pretty good bet that that's acting as a catalyst for that to happen. So, of course, strong acids like uh, sulfuric acid will be a source of protons. So imagine that that proton comes over here and causes this pair of electrons to jump away and form a good leaving group. What this will do is cause one of the adjacent hydrogens to leave also, forming the double bond in its wake. And uh, that would actually replenish the acid catalyst that has actually uh, been used in this case. So it gives you an idea mechanistically a little bit about uh, how that exactly works. So the hydrogen comes in, causes the leaving group to get out. The bond collapses here in order to form the double bond and that hydrogen replaces the proton. So gives you an idea about elimination and thanks for watching.